And I humbly ask that you would open your hearts and your minds to the presence of the living God that lives within you and who breathes new life into each and every one of us. Let us pray. Almighty, loving, and gracious God, you who are all that we need, be with us, bless us, anoint us by the presence of your Holy Spirit both within us and among us. Help us as we come into this act of worship to open our hearts and our minds to the possibilities of a God who loves us, a God who is gracious with us, a God whose compassion abides with us. So it is in the opening of our hearts and minds, O God, that we are ready to hear, to listen, to act, and to respond to that voice that lives within us. And now, Holy One, I pray that you would touch my lips of clay, mold them into the words that need to be spoken this day. And may the words that come from my mouth and the meditations on each and every one of our hearts, may they be ever acceptable to you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Throughout this month of June, we will be uh, celebrating and remembering many different events that are part of our community and part of who we are as we celebrate pride. Uh, We'll be celebrating and remembering the many events that center around our community, and on the last Sunday of this month, we will be inviting you to wear as many rainbow colors as you can so that we might come and celebrate Pride Sunday together, the reminder of Stonewall, which has been a landmark event. That's not to say that things didn't happen before Stonewall, but it is a landmark event in this country that brings forth the beginnings of the gay liberation movement, and we'll be sharing more about that as the month goes by. Today, however, we come to affirm this God who is within us and to celebrate Graduation Sunday. And although only just a couple of us stood amongst us, I know that there are many who have graduated in their lives. If graduation is really about transformation, then every one of us is graduating from something, graduating from some event in our life that perhaps we have moved on from, some events in our lives that we have needed to put to sleep in order that we might feel the renewing of the presence of God in our lives. And for many of us in this congregation, that is an ongoing, evolving process of being able to let go and to hang on to let go of some of the toxic religion and toxic faith that has so found its way into the whole of the world, and to hold on to the truth of a God of grace and love and compassion, to hold on in the midst of all that is happening in our world and to remain faithful to this God of grace. I will tell you that over this last 12 months, I have received emails from members of our own congregation who struggle so desperately with what it means to be a person of faith in a world that seems to have given up on the real message of Jesus. It's hard to hold on to a faith in a a God of love when it seems that the entirety of the Christian church has given up on love given up on what it means to be a follower, a devout follower of Jesus, and have forgotten what it means to passionately live in that place where we stand with the oppressed and with the poor and the marginalized and those who have less than us. The whole sense of the gospel of Jesus Christ is one that encourages us to remember that there is always a future and we must always give them hope. It's why we are called Cathedral of Hope, a cathedral where for many generations we have offered hope to the world, a hope that makes a difference. It is that gospel that we must return to over and over and over again and to remind us always that as followers of Jesus, we are not called to live the ways of the world, but we are to live in the ways of Jesus. The Jesus who was the revolutionary, 
the Jesus who was the itinerant preacher who went beyond the boundaries of his own faith, of his own experience, and began to enable others to find their place at the table. Everything about Jesus was about making the table bigger, not smaller. And this gospel that we preach in this church, a future and a hope, a future of a generation who are desperately in need of of spirituality, who say that I'm spiritual, not religious, because the religious will always fail us. Religious is always bound up in its tradition. The religious is always bound up in its way of finding power. But the way of Jesus is the way of speaking truth to power and enabling the world to once again find its center, to find its hope, to find its future. And Cathedral of Hope is one of those beacons, I believe, in this world that is calling us over and over again to find our hope, even in the midst of a world that seems hopeless. I don't believe in that world. I will not concede to that world. I believe that the world and what the world needs in this generation is a people who will keep their eye on the future and who will bring a word of hope to the hopeless. My favorite, favorite saint is Saint Harvey Milk, (laughs) who said you've got to give them hope. You've got to give the people hope. Hope is the one thing that each and every one of us needs if we are to see ourselves in the future, to see ourselves as part of God's creation, and to give hope to the hopeless. I believe that we need revival in the world today. I know that that is an evangelical conservative word, but I'm reclaiming it for Cathedral of Hope this morning. I believe that we need revival I believe that we need to find something within our own hearts that will set ourselves on fire and ablaze for this glory of a God who invites us to graduate every day of our lives, to find something within us that will keep us going, that will keep us faithful, that will keep us mindful of the values of Jesus bring us over and over again to the experience of our lives, an experience that is not not dull, that is not boring, but is a life's journey that continues to explore itself within our bodies to find the presence of Jesus there and to live from that place of hope. I've found myself saying over and over again, more often perhaps in these days than in other days where I get up and and, and face the news of the day and, and have to remind myself, not today, Satan. Not today are you gonna steal my joy. Not today are you gonna steal my hope. Not today are you gonna take away from me that blessed assurance that Jesus is mine a future, and a hope. Jesus knew what that meant for his own generation as he spoke in this Christian text that we read this morning. If salt loses its saltiness, it cannot be resalted again. It is salt that is worth being thrown into the fire because it has lost its passion for a future and a hope. Many of us in the Christian church sometimes have lost our saltiness We have lost that spice of life and have conceded to a world of hopelessness. Jesus invites us to be renewed and to be revived and to find within us some purpose and a hope that will keep us going, and not to be that salt that is worth throwing into the fire. Now, I know that salt can be bad for our health, but I don't think that's what Jesus was talking about. I think what Jesus was talking about, that, that salt, that spice, that, that thing that, that, that wakes up every part of our bodies and reminds us of what we are called to be in the world, a saltiness, a spiciness. Some might even say a fabulousness. 
but that presence in the world that will remind it and us that we are called to be the future and the hope. A future for those who have lost their faith. A a future for those who have had their faith stolen from them. A a future for those who have given up on church, given up on God, giving up on even believing that there are people of goodwill in this world. And that we might be living examples of what Jesus went on to say, a light of the world. A light that invites us not to light that light and then hide it under the bedstead, but a light that takes itself and places it out into the world so that it might illuminate the places that need to be transformed, that illuminates the places not just of the world but also of our own lives that need to graduate, that need to be transformed to find that light and to allow it to shine. In our Hebrew text, we were reminded that God knows the ways of our lives. God certainly knew the ways of the lives of the ancient people, so much so that Jesus was sent into the world to remind them of the light, to remind them of their direction, to remind them that there was a future and a hope. And Jesus then left us with the commandment, the commission, to go into all of the world and to bring about a sense of good news. You hear that? Jesus said, I want to bring you good news. Good news. Why are we so focused on bad news? Why why are we so focused on, on the bad stuff that goes on in our world when perhaps we could be reminded of the good stuff that goes on? The folks who go to seminary and who will wear buttons that say Black Lives Matter, who will go into the ways of the world and wear a button that says Trans Lives Matter, that in this season of pride will wear our rainbow fabulousness and say that LGBTQA lives matter and that all lives ultimately matter. It is that future and that hope. The future for Cathedral of Hope as we put our new sign on the landmark of Cedar Springs. I know that people think that that's maybe not the way to spend our money, but I think it's the right way to spend our money because we need people to know exactly where Cathedral of Hope United Church of Christ is. But the sign on the street is just one step in being a future and a hope. Placing ourselves right there on Cedar Springs speaks to the hundreds and hundreds of thousands that go to the airport every day and the hundreds and hundreds of thousands of lives that need to be transformed by this renewing of the mind of the salt and the light of the world. But what we do beyond the sign will really make the difference. What we do beyond the sign and the lives that matter in this congregation this day as we renew and remind ourselves and find that place of revival, as we find that place within us that keeps us moving forward to be that future and that hope. The ways in which we will care for the vulnerable and the less fortunate for the many in our congregation who are passionate about youth homelessness in our city. And those who are working 24-7, I hear over and over again from those in our community who are finding ways to put together a project that hopefully will uh, uh, eventually bring to a youth homeless shelter here in Dallas, run by Cathedral of Hope and Dallas Hope Charities. It's what we do beyond the sign. The the folks who are working passionately about looking for affordable housing for for LGBTQ plus and beyond seniors in our congregation and in our world who are looking for a place where they don't have to go back in the closet when they need to find affordable housing in our community. That they might live out their rest of their days out and loud and proud 
just as they were able to do in their own homes, a future and a hope. Cathedral of Hope, this is not just about building a, a church. This is about building a movement, a, a movement of people who are passionate about being that future and that hope. And it starts with you and me rekindling the experience of faith in our lives. This past weekend, we were, several of us were down at the South Central Conference of the United Church of Christ. There's a, a lot of words in there. But the South Central Conference of the United Church of Christ, and as a part of that conference, uh, I was uh, honored to be able to share in ministry with Reverend Dr. Joe Hudson, and both of us taught a session together on spirituality. And in that session together, and I want to tell you it was a, a wonderful experience, but in that session together, we talked about reminding ourselves of that moment when we just knew that God loves us just the way we are. I think sometimes we forget that moment. Now, I realize that perhaps for some of us that has been a, an evolving experience, but for me, I can look back on that one moment all those years ago, all those years ago, <laughs> when I knew without a shadow of a doubt, no matter what the church may have said, no matter what theologians may have said, no matter what parents may have said, no matter what an institution may have said, that I knew without a shadow of a doubt that God did not make a mistake that God loved me just the way that I was and the way that I am becoming. I look back to that moment in the times when I don't see a future, when I don't see a hope. And I look back to that moment and I go, whoo! Yeah, that's what I did, whoo! <laughs> I look back to that moment and I'm able to experience it one more time. I think that's what it was like for those early disciples when they came upon Jesus that day. And when they came upon Jesus and there was something in their body that responded. In their body they responded with a future and with a hope. I encourage us, Cathedral of Hope United Church of Christ, as we begin this month, as we live in this culture, as we know the experiences of our own day, to allow that salt to spice up the life and to take the light that lives within us and not to hide it, not to hide it, not to go back into our closets, my mother told me that when I came out of the womb, the closet was burned to the ground. <laughs> and I ain't going back in no closet. But to come out, to allow our light to shine, to allow it to be a beacon, not just to me, but to all the world. And to allow it to be a beacon of hope for the future. May God bless us. Cathedral of Hope, United Church of Christ, we have a purpose and a meaning and a way for the world today, perhaps in a way that we yet do not know. May it be so as we keep our future and our hope alive.